Hi, everybody, and welcome to my demo on building your first conversational chatbot for Microsoft Teams. In case you just want to reach me after the call, use my at least Twitter handle so you can reach me out on Twitter if you have any questions about what I'm demoing today. Um, as you might know, there are few, uh, let's say, options when building chatbots uh, in the Microsoft world. You got uh, PVA um, coming from the Power Platform. You got um, the Microsoft Bot Framework and Azure Bot Service. And of course, um, uh, some other options as well. Uh, what I'll do today is I'll go through a demo uh, which I've built using Bot Premier Composer. So, Bot Premier Composer is the uh, more or less graphical user interface built on top of the Microsoft Bot Framework, which you can use to build bots not only for Teams, um, but in general. Um, and I've prepared a little bot which I'm gonna walk you through um, in the next couple of minutes. So um, I won't build anything from scratch. I've prepared the demo already and I'll walk you through that. Um, so first things first, if you go ahead and uh, create a bot with Composer, you've got a lot of templates you can use. You can create an empty bot. You can create a more or less conversational bot. You can uh, leverage the, the templates built by Microsoft or build your own. Um, I've gone with the core bot template, which includes uh, at least language understanding. So it comes with um, some basic triggers in there. It comes with um, some language understanding um, functionality in there. Um, if you go ahead and create a bot, um, you need to at least uh, assign your bot your language understanding key. So you got to go to the Azure portal, create a new Lewis application or Lewis service, get the authoring key from there and paste it into your Composer bot. And the second thing I have done already is I've created a Azure um, bot, which which was then called in the past uh, bot channel registration service. Uh, and I've pasted it in the Microsoft app ID and my Microsoft app password. So um, switching to the Azure portal, I've created an Azure bot. Uh, with that Azure bot comes a new enterprise application or app registration for you. Um, you got to get you got to get the Microsoft App ID and the App Secret paste it into Composer. And what I've done as well, because as we're speaking about building a bot for Teams and building a bot targeted to the Microsoft uh, 365 ecosystem, we of course need at least some basic functionality um, coming from Azure AD or from the graph. So what I've done for my Azure bot is I have added a new OAuth uh, connection. Um, which is uh, of type service provider Azure AD. Uh, and in there, um, you need to at least provide uh, client ID and client secret. And of course, you need to provide the resource URL you're going to you're gonna use um, within your bot uh, use case then, which is in my case, the Microsoft Graph. And you need to define the scopes you want to um, you want to tackle which is in my case some basic ones like user read uh, profile open id and stuff so that's basically a preparation you need to fulfill before you can uh, you, you, before you can give it a go and then going back to composer what i have done right now is um, within my root dialog which is called core with language dialog i have added some um, basic triggers um, some have been coming from the default template like reading, cancel, help, and stuff like that. And what I have done is I have added another trigger called get reports dialog because what I want to do is uh, whenever a user uh, interacts with the with the chatbot in Microsoft Teams, um, the user should be able to get basic information about his direct reports. So what I've done here is I've added a trigger, um, and as you can see on the right hand side here. This trigger has some trigger phrases, so language understanding kicks in. And whenever a user asks the bot something about his direct reports, like show me the direct reports or stuff like that, this trigger will be triggered and then a new dialogue will begin. And this dialogue is called get reports dialogue. And in here, um, you'll see the first connection to my Azure AD app with the OAuth logging because somehow the chatbot needs to know who the user is and basically um, get the credentials of that user and get the user context. So I'm using a uh, an action called OAuth login. And in there, I just need to provide my connection name. Remember, this is the connection name I have uh, added to my Azure, uh, Azure bot um, with this OAuth 
uh, service connection, which is called AADSPI. Um, and then you can give it a title and stuff like that. And the most important piece of, of information here is that the, the token property. So where should Composer, where should the bot store the token to, which is then received upon when the user um, logs in, which is in our case, turn.token. So it's valid for the current turn. Um, and the property is called token. And with that token, I can then go uh, ahead and go to the Microsoft Graph. And as you can see in here, I have um, uh, I've added actions for the Microsoft Graph. So those can be used uh, and installed right into your composer-based bot using the package management tool. And in there, I have just installed two uh, basic packages, which don't show up right now. But if you search for an example for Graph, um, you can basically just install the Microsoft Graph package. And there's another one for Teams, which then give you more um, more options in terms of uh, actions you can use, like uh, get the user, get the signed in user's profile. Um, and in there, we just need to provide again, the token, turn the token was the property we have assigned uh, within our OAuth login uh, action and the actual value of the token is stored into the token property. And then with that, as we have the current signed in user's profile, we can then, of course, store that uh, information in another property called turn.user. And then we can use that uh, property in another action, get direct reports of a user. Um, and this action basically just asks for a user ID. And as we have the user ID with the signed in user's profile, we can then go ahead and say, okay, the user ID is turn.user.id. Um, and then we store that again in another property called turn reports. And with that turn reports, we can then go ahead and get the profile for each report. For the sake of simplicity, I have just added one action. Usually you would do a for each loop and loop through all uh, direct reports you'll get back and then get for each report because you don't, you just get the ID of that report uh, or of that user, uh, which is a report of that uh, signed in user. Uh, and then you go ahead and get the full profile. So you get display name, first name, last name, email address, user principal name, and stuff like that. Um, I've just done it for one user, turn dot reports, uh, and the first uh, occurrence uh, dot ID. And then what we'll do is we'll just really simple uh, stand out um, the user's display name and the user's email address. Um, and that's basically it. Um, so if I'm going to run that bot right now, just right from Composer, click start, um, and we'll give it a, a minute or so to start. Uh, I've already prepared a new Microsoft Teams app with the within the App Studio. Um, I have pasted in the uh, Microsoft App ID of the uh, Azure bot I've, I've, I've shown earlier. Um, and then what I can do from here is just go ahead and install and edit, and I've already installed it. So um, the conversation won't be blank. But we'll see if we're going to go back. The bot is already running. So I can go ahead now and say, show me my direct reports. And what the bot will actually do now is if uh, we are lucky, we should get the, the login um, prompt because I've restarted the bot right now. Um, but you'll see it's all, the, the user account is already logged in. Um, so it reaches out to the graph, gets the current user's uh, profile, gets this, gets the reports uh, of that user, and then gets the profile of the reports. And then it will basically respond back with um, these details. What I have done as well, uh, because one-on-one -on -one chat is just one aspect of uh, Microsoft Teams, but you want to include your bot uh, anywhere in Teams, you can also go ahead and include your bot in a channel. Um, and there's a, a quite a cool feature within Composer, um, which is a trigger called on channel created. So whenever there's a channel created in a specific team where the bot is already a member of, um, the bot can actually react to that. So in my case, what I'm going to do is I'll get the team members um, whenever a new channel is created, and then I can do something with it. And I've just for the sake of simplicity, um, sent out a message to a team's channel. So if I'm going to go back to teams and open up a team where the bot is already a member of and select add channel give it a name click on add 
And what will now happen is that the bot will uh, actually uh, use that trigger on channel created and say, okay, awesome that a new channel has been created called PNP demo. And then you can react on that uh, and stuff like that. And as you might imagine, um, that's not, not the only part where you can include your bot to um, because you can also add your bot to meetings and within Composer, you can also uh, handle those kinds of actions and triggers. So you don't need to uh, more or less use um, code to, to build your first conversational bot for teams. You can do it without any, any development uh, efforts, just using Composer. Back to you, David, thanks. Awesome stuff, Stephen. Thank you. That is really, really cool how you can set up these various scenarios for the the uh, the bots and within the teams and the triggers. Really cool stuff. Thank you for sharing. Thank you.